crypto market in about 24 hours as Bitcoin falls below 50K. Joining us this morning to talk about whether or not we're going to get heightened regulatory scrutiny, former SEC chair and CNBC contributor Jay Clayton. Jay, welcome back. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. So it, it seems like every headline this week has had that phrase, heightened regulatory scrutiny. It's being blamed for Bitcoin's fall. Uh, it's being blamed for the uh, way in which SPAC issuance has screeched to a halt. Is that a, a, a legitimate boogeyman or not? Well, look, let's, let's talk about digital assets uh, more generally, Bitcoin being the best known of, of the digital assets. And my, my answer to this is, of course, we're going to have more regulation that touches on digital assets. It, it, let's, let's go with the potential functions for digital assets. We've got store of value, we've got method of payment, and then we've got facilitation of financial transactions. Starting at the very top, in all of those areas, you need transparency. You need to know that any money laundering, any terrorist financing, and frankly, to, to put a point on it, taxation rules are being followed. You need to know that they're being followed around the globe. Because if you're having financial transactions, we've learned over time that you need those to have what I would say is a legitimate, well-functioning system that doesn't facilitate bad actors. So that is that is part of what is coming, regardless of the activity, the underlying digital asset activity. And then we can talk about different pieces of regulation, depending on whether it's store value, payment mechanism, or the like. But that's that's the threshold thing that is coming and needs to come. So the degree to which and the way in which that is communicated uh, to investors and to traders, how do you see that happening? Which agency uh, necessarily leads on this? And, and on what timeline? Is this going to be a, a, Q2, a Q2 story or something this year? No, I think this is an evolving story that's already started. You know, we have, we have dedicated professionals. I know we've had a transition in government, but we have dedicated women and men at the Treasury, at the SEC, Fed, and frankly, around the world, who have been looking at this issue for some time. So this is going to continue to come, and it's going to continue to evolve. Because again, those fundamental issues do need to be addressed to have a well-functioning system. I think anybody who's involved in this, any digital asset proponent, is believes in their hearts that you need to take care of that. You need to take care of the transparency aspects of this. And then, again, around the activities. So Let's talk about store of value. To have a store of value, you still need to be connected to our financial system. If you're a retail customer who wants to get involved in a digital asset for store of value, mm -hmm. are, are you comfortable with custody? Are you comfortable with the market in which it's trading is not being manipulated? Those things are being examined as well. Yeah, just to shift gears a little bit, Jay, I mean, We've seen the, the fallout from the Archego situation over the last couple of weeks. Now we've got the SEC saying it's going to review fund disclosure rules. Uh, I wonder what, what you think manifests from that. But one, of the, one of the jobs at the SEC, and again, um, Gary Gensler, super smart guy, understands this. The women, at, at women and men at the SEC understand this. Our disclosure rules need to evolve as technology evolves and markets evolve. And we have, a, we have a, what I would call an array of disclosure rules around financial positions of institutions. There are disclosure rules that are aimed at telling other shareholders whether, you, whether you've crossed certain thresholds and are going to exert influence on the company. We have disclosure rules that go to what I would call is market integrity. And in fact, this fall, rules around swaps that have been pending for a long time, uh, frankly, too long, we got them done, but they are going to go into effect. The, uh, the Dodd-Frank swap rules are going to go into effect. But the, the women and men at the SEC are going to look at, they'll look at 13F, they'll look at short sale disclosure, they'll look at these things and say, have they kept pace with market activities and their purpose? Jay, it's David Faber. Another area that Mr. Gensler is looking closely at, of course, is SPACs, and that was something that came up during your tenure as well. Uh, the activity already has lessened considerably just with the prospect of SEC regulations, whether it be on hold periods or prognostications and projections from the companies. Are they going down a road that you foresaw as well uh, during your tenure? Well, look, David, it's nice to see you again. Um, we talked, I think, I can't remember whether it was September or much about the disclosure around the dilution of de spacking transaction, ensuring that investors understand, investors who are coming in at the time of the de spacking transaction, understand the dynamics of that transaction, what it means for their investment. 
And then the alignment of interest with management and the sponsors and, and how long management and sponsors are committed to stay side by side with the investors who are coming in for these backing transactions. You know, that disclosure around that from both a regulatory perspective, but also a market perspective, market practice perspective should evolve so people can, can get their hands around those issues as efficiently as possible. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.